that's the way it says. Wanted to bring something to y'all out of the news. I don't know how many people have read it. It's, uh, the link was on the Drudge Report. It's to a Daily Mail article. And the headline is, I totally get what he did. Moss Gore, who knew terror truck driver rails against President's, President Bush's Middle East policy, but says he's a Trump supporter. Um, the article you know, talks about how the guy knew him in passing and stuff. Um, you know, he met him off and on over two years. Uh, he says, I didn't know him by name, but I would see him there every two or three months. Um, this guy, Abu Muhammad, the guy they're interviewing, is a cement mixer by trade and living in the U.S. now for nearly three decades. Abu described the murder suspect as having a beautiful smile, was a nice guy, and someone who never cursed. He called me brother and I did the same back at him. And it says Abu railed against the U.S. foreign policy in the Middle East, particularly blaming President Bush Sr. in Sun era for escalating tensions. And here, here's the quote. I totally get what he did, Abu said of the suspect. It's in response to Muslims dying every day as a result of this ongoing conflict. Why doesn't the media cover that? The U.S. needs to get out and let us run our own affairs. But as long as they meddle and interfere, these terrorist attacks will continue to happen. This is the part we need to listen to. First, I totally get what he did. That means he supports what he did. That means he's okay with what he did. He understands why he did it. The U.S. needs to get out and let us run our own affairs. This guy's a uh, Pakistani national, which means he's not a citizen, he's here on a visa. And, or maybe he's a citizen because he voted. He voted for Trump, it says. So I guess he has to be a citizen. If he's a citizen, then why is he saying the U.S. needs to get out and let us run our own affairs? Us being the Middle Easterns, Iraq, Iran, Saudi Arabia, <coughs> um, Pakistan, yada, yada, yada. This guy just proclaimed his... lack of allegiance to the United States of America and a full allegiance to the Middle East because the Muslim faith believes that that's the Holy Land and that they should spread their faith over the entire face of the planet and that it should be the only one. There's no way to argue that. There's a million different ways they're allowed to do it. Well, maybe not a million, but there's a lot. They're allowed to lie. They're allowed to misdirect. We need to be really careful. We need to pay attention to stuff like this. Like, um, I looked all over the place to see if anybody else had jumped on this yet. And there's, there's, there's nobody has, has jumped on this article. I mean, here's a guy that's been here for 30 years. Flat out says he gets why he did it, which means he understands it, even backs him on it. I mean, I'm sorry, that's what that says. When you say you get it, I understand it. Nowhere in here does he call the guy a murderer, uh, a terrorist, or anything like that. 
calls him a brother. He says that the U.S., the country he's allowed to vote in, needs to get out of his homeland and let him let him and his brothers run their own affairs. I think we need to be a little bit more careful about stuff. And as part of it being uh, the Bush's fault. Let's, let's read this real quick. I'm going to slow this in here. <clears throat> this is uh, Remember Clinton's War in Iraq? Question mark. This is uh, from World Net Daily. Digital pioneer in independent online news since 1997. And this is, I'm just going to read one paragraph. Clinton, December 1998. Earlier today, I ordered America's armed forces to strike military and security targets in Iraq. Their mission is to attack Iraq's nuclear, chemical, and biological weapons programs and its military capacity to threaten its neighbors. Saddam Hussein must not be allowed to threaten his neighbors or the world with nuclear arms, poison gas, or biological weapons. Sounds like uh, Clinton was bombing the Middle East too. You know, that was barely mentioned in passing in the news. Just for the record, when that didn't work, who remembers the crash? The oil field crash, the oil price crash. Bombing them didn't shut, shut it all down. So they pulled their money. It literally dumped everything we had, every every bit of reserves we had on the, the free oil market and brought the oil prices crashing down. So he fought it physically with military strikes and economically with his move to release all the oil into the market. Doing way more damage at home than he did over there. They've got heavier crude than we do. They can survive on $12, $14 a barrel. We can't. Yeah. That's that's what we're fighting against. Or what we're struggling against as a country. There's people that don't believe this is their country. They want to live here. Why do they want to live here if, if this isn't going to be their country? What possible reason could you have for moving literally to the other side of the globe and living in a society that does not embrace your ideology of how you should treat uh, homosexuals, women, or just in general other human beings? I mean, what possible reason could you have? <clears throat> and if it's something as simple as, uh, so they can have a better life, you know, they're hold, they hold uh, the land where they're from as sacred. So couldn't they just do the whatever it took to fix? That, why do they have to leave? They don't have to. 
stuffed on purpose. Because you can't spread peanut butter if you're not on that piece of bread. That simple. Y'all good day. Watch news. Watch the little articles. Don't don't trust uh, mainstream media. Do not do it. Be ready for whatever. Let me see. I'm afraid these truck things are going to become the thing of normalcy. Somebody in his family, amongst his friends, in his brotherhood, had to know what he was thinking. They could have stopped it. They didn't want to. Yep. Anyway. Have a good day. Stay safe. Try not to die. Be ready.